In this video, we're gonna look at how to use asynchronous callbacks in JavaScript. There's three main types of callback functions in JavaScript. There's the synchronous callback functions like for each and map. There's async event-based callback functions like event listeners in the browser. And then there's asynchronous callback functions that are there for performance reasons, like the ones we use when we're making an Ajax request or reading a file or something that might take a little bit of time. And I wanna take a look at each of those types of callback functions in this video. And to do that, I've set up a really basic web page that has a button and a couple of checkboxes, and that's it. It's really simple. Here's the HTML, here's the button, here's the checkboxes, uh, and here's my script file where I'm gonna write some callback functions. I already covered synchronous callback functions in a different video, so I'll just briefly review them here. But these are callback functions that run immediately. So here I have the collection of checkboxes on the web page. that's these three checkboxes here. So I can grab these and call dot for each on them, which accepts a callback function and it will call this function for each of the checkboxes. So I could do something like a console log checkbox.name, for example. And this is being executed uh, immediately, so we should see it in the console. If I refresh the page, there's the different names of the checkboxes. And if I were to write a console log up here uh, for before the for the for each, and another one down here for after the for each, everything would get executed in order. So first we'll see before the for each, then we'll get each checkbox's name printed out to the console, and then we'll get the after for each. Refresh that and we can see that's the result. So there's nothing asynchronous going on here. We are using a callback function, this is the callback function, but it's all synchronous. It's all happening in order as we'd expect it to. So now let's get to event-based callback functions and these are asynchronous callback functions. So I'm gonna comment this out for now and right here I have the button. That's this button on the page right here that I can click. And I want to execute some logic when that button is actually clicked. And we can do that by adding an event listener for the click event and then passing this add event listener function, our own callback function. And when this function is called, we can do pretty much whatever we want. I'm just gonna do a console log button clicked. And if I refresh this page, every time I click this button, that's what appears in the console, button clicked. And then if I do the same as I did before, so I'm gonna console log before button click, click, geez. And then I'll put another console log under for after button click. If I refresh this page, we'll get before button click, then after button click appearing in the console, but we won't actually see this console log because not all of this logic gets executed in order. So here we can see there are the button clicks and if I click the button, then we finally get button clicked. But until I click that button, we never see that logged to the console. All of this logic is still happening in order. First this console log happens, then we do add an event listener. That happens on line 14, but we're handing the event listener this callback function. And the event listener won't execute the logic inside of this function, it won't invoke this function until someone clicks on that button. And this could happen immediately, it could happen once, it could happen twice, it could happen a thousand times, or it could happen zero times, we have no idea. So this is some logic that will get executed when the button gets clicked, if it ever gets clicked, and every single time it gets clicked. And then finally on line 18, we get after button click. So this is after the event listener was set up. These type of event-based callback functions can't be avoided in JavaScript. With the performance callback functions that I'll get to in a moment, we can replace them with promises. We can replace them with async await. But these types of callback functions can't be replaced. These event-based ones where it might get executed once, it may never get executed at all, these always have to be callback functions. And these are similar to express routes. If you've ever done uh, server-side programming, you might have written an express app that had a route for something like, uh, you know, get whatever uh, rec res. 
And here we're passing a callback function to an express app that may get executed if someone ever makes a get request to our server, may never get executed, may get executed thousands of times, who knows? So these are the same type of event-based callback functions. And just to be complete here, I'm gonna loop over the checkboxes with the synchronous callback function. And instead of just console logging the checkbox name, I'm going to add an event listener for, uh, I think it's change. Every time the checkbox value changes. Uh, and in this case, I'll console log the name and the checkbox dot checked. I think it's checked value, hopefully. So uh, before the for each, then we'll do the for each. This will get executed synchronously. Then it will set up an event listener where this function will only get executed in the future if I click on a checkbox and all the synchronous code will happen immediately and we'll see all those console logs, but this asynchronous code, these asynchronous callback functions here and here will not get executed unless I click on the button or on the checkbox. So let's see that we see all the synchronous code happen. And then if I click the button, I get button clicked. And then if I click on a checkbox, uh, yeah, got those right. We get those different values. So these need to be asynchronous callback functions because we have no idea when or if they will ever be executed. When we make these types of callback functions, we're specifying the logic that should be run, in this case, when a button is clicked. We're not gonna run that logic, we're just gonna package it up into a function, hand it over to the browser and tell the browser, execute this function if someone clicks on this button. So now for the performance-based async functions, and before I get into that, I'm gonna clear up all of these console logs here. So these are the type of callback functions that we'll use when we're making an AJAX request or uh, reading a file or doing database connections or many other things really. Uh, the example that I'm gonna use in this project is hashing a password using bcrypt because bcrypt is a cool library that actually hashes things really slowly if we want it to so we can see the effect of a slow task in our application. And before I use this function, I'm just gonna add a little bit of code to this button. So every time this button is clicked, I want the button to actually animate. And I don't actually remember how to animate buttons, so I'm just going to paste in some code here, but essentially this is going to do a 360 degree flip over three seconds every time I click the button. So uh, refresh and click the button, and it does this slow little animation of turning around. Cool. So like I said, I have this library called bcrypt that I've already imported into my project, and bcrypt allows me to hash some text. Uh, I'm gonna use the synchronous version of this library. Um, so I'll just pass it a, a bit of text, I don't know, pancakes, uh, and a number. And the number is directly correlated with the amount of time it takes for this to be performed. Um, so I'm gonna put in uh, 12 here, and I'm just gonna get a, a hash. Uh, so I'll console log this hash out. Um, and I might put in uh, one more console log up here. So button clicked, then I'll run this hashing function, just this slow hashing function. I'll log the hash uh, and then I'll tell the button to animate. So let's see what happens here. I'll click the button we get button clicked, then we get the hash and then it starts rotating. I don't think 12 was quite slow enough. I'm gonna go for 13. Every time you increase the number here by one, it doubles the amount of time it takes. So let's try 13. Oh yeah, you can see a bit of a delay there. Okay, so I'm gonna refresh this again. If I click the button, we'll see button clicked, then a bit of a delay, then we see the hash, then it starts animating. Okay, so this function, takes a little while. Uh, I might even make it take uh, a little bit longer, 14, we'll double that amount of time. It's taking seconds to run. So because this is taking seconds, uh, the button doesn't get animated until seconds after I've clicked it, which is kind of annoying. I wanted it to animate immediately. So uh, you might have a temptation to just move this up before the function. So uh, we'll console log button clicked, then we'll animate, then we'll run this long hashing function and everything should just work and it'll take a little while to hash, but that's fine. We'll be able to see that printed out to the console when it's done. So now I'm gonna click this button again and button clicked and I am running the animation code um, and then we get the hash and it finally animates. And the issue here isn't the order that I'm executing things in, it's that 
when we have a long running task that is synchronous, it is blocking everything we do in JavaScript. So no animations can happen, no button clicks can happen. We can actually see if I uh, refresh the page again and I click it and I try checking these checkboxes, nothing is working because my web page is completely unresponsive. It's completely blocked while that hashing algorithm is happening. And it finally caught up with me after the hash was done. Uh, the browser realized I was trying to click those things and they all kind of came in at once, but nothing else can happen while that hash is happening synchronously. So this is a performance based thing. This can obviously be done synchronously. It is possible. And things like HTTP requests and database connections, they can all be done synchronously but it leads to blocking code like this. And this is really bad for performance, really bad for user experience. So we don't want to run them synchronously. We want to run them asynchronously. And the solution to running it asynchronously is to use a callback function. I should mention that before promises and async await, we had to use callback functions to achieve performance here. But in modern JavaScript, you're much more likely to use promises and async await. So it's still important to understand how to use callback functions. But if you were to do this in your application today, you would most likely just use async await. Bcrypt has a different function. It's called hash instead of hash sync. And instead of returning the hashed value right here, we are gonna pass it a callback function that is going to get passed in either an error or a hash. And I'll come back to the error part in a little bit. Right now, we're just gonna focus on the hash. So I'll move my console log here that's gonna console log the hash inside of the callback function that I passed to bcrypt. Because what we're doing is packaging up our logic into a function again. We're gonna hand that function over to bcrypt's hash function and bcrypt will execute this function when it is finally done hashing. So I'll have access to that hash only inside of this callback function. So I can see that I've got a console log for button clicked. Um, I'll even have a console log down here for uh, button done, you know, at the very end of my uh, button event listener. And in the middle here, uh, we are gonna hash. And once that hash is done, we're gonna console log the hash. So let's just see what happens here now if I click the button. So we click it, it animates immediately, we get button clicked, button done. And then at some point in the future, I get that hash and we can see this again. So we ask bcrypt to hash that piece of text. It's gonna take a couple seconds. And we're asking bcrypt to do this asynchronously now. So go and do this hash, it's gonna take a little while. When you are done, call this callback function execute this callback function where all I'm gonna do is console log the hash out to the console. So that's it. We are asking this library to do it asynchronously, which means that when that library is done, when it's completed its asynchronous task, it needs to call this callback function to tell us it's done. Notice also that we don't just get the hash passed in here, we also get an error. Because when we run this asynchronous task and when we run most asynchronous tasks, there could be an error that happens for some reason. And the way we detect that is an error might be passed to the callback function. And in node applications, usually we get the error first and then the actual piece of information that we wanted. So in most situations, when we're using callback functions like this, we would first check if there was an error. Uh, and if there is, maybe we console log it out and do nothing else, just stop because there was an error. And then if there wasn't an error, we know that this will actually have the value that we want and we get to continue on. Everything was successful, we have the hash. This is something to remember in node applications, especially because the async callback functions will be error first. And whether you're using callback functions or promises or async await, you should always remember to handle your errors. Another thing that's really important to remember is that I have access to the data that was retrieved asynchronously within the callback function. And if I have any code that is dependent on this data, it has to be executed from within the callback function. So uh, for example, if I create a variable for data out here and then I try and uh, assign that to hash, so that I can use that data out here. Let's just console log the data. This is something that I see people try to do sometimes. This code gets executed at some point in the future. This is now code, this is now code. This will all run immediately, but this gets executed at some point in the future. So data within this function will always be undefined. It just won't have a value yet. Uh, and if I run this, we'll be able to see data was undefined. So you must make sure that if you have any code that is dependent on this hash, on the data coming back from whichever API you're using, that all of the code 
all code goes inside the callback function. So remember, callbacks can be synchronous or asynchronous. We can have the performance-based callbacks, which can be replaced with promises or async await. And then we have event-based callback functions, which can't be replaced with anything. They have to be callback functions. If you want me to make videos about promises or async await, leave a comment letting me know and subscribe if you wanna get updates when I make new videos. I want